Okay, so finally this review is now here. Now, I could have technically reviewed this on the day it actually released because it kind of leaked two days uh, before the album release, or I could have reviewed it the day after. But um, I had, uh, like, other things to review. I had other things to listen to. There is so many bands. There's about seven bands I need to get through. And um, so, uh, someone lives with me, so um, I do feel slightly embarrassed if... Uh, they're kind of uh, able to kind of hear me. I just feel rather embarrassed about it. So um, she's out, so um, I can get this uh, finally done and out. So for those who don't know and they've just come into this, um, this is the second album by The Raven Age, so they have an album before this. Now, saying what I feel about the album before this may give you a better understanding of uh, where I'm coming from, um, how, why I feel the way I feel, and just give you a bit more understanding of my opinions. So the first album, I did not like it. I pretty much hate that album. I find it excruciatingly boring. Reasons being for that, um, all the Trong's songs are, last, that are in about the five minute range up to eight, if not even longer. So they have really long songs on the first album, which ain't bad because it usually shows um, a lot of diversity in the song and a lot to kind of listen to in one song, which I can show good musicianship. But the problem with that is the song pacing, the tempo, is so slow. Like if you take the song The Promised Land, the beat of that is dun 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 and it's just so slow and there's nothing going on. It's basically just that beefy, fat riff. There's no cool, uh, fast lead going on or just an interesting lead uh, going on. There's just nothing. It's just so dreary. And that is the whole album. Pacing and tempo is always slow. The vocalist, when he comes in um, in The Promised Land, he is so monotone and just without a care in the world. Just promised land. Dun, 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 dun. He just sounds so fed up, so bored. He was absolutely crap, an appalling singer. Uh, the tempos were so slow and depressing. Mixed in with everything else I've just mentioned, makes it even worse um there's technically no solos um to get your first solo you're looking at about five tracks bloody in or something so with uh, their previous works when um they are now releasing these new singles um the first uh three i believe uh, didn't have solo so i did a comment saying no solos then and i actually got um a quite spiteful comment um in reply saying uh you clearly haven't seen them live and says what have live really got to do with it and they're like well they do really great solos live and it's like yeah but this is the album so basically they don't put any solo or thought in when doing the album therefore you have to go pay them live to get the better fuller experience that seems extremely stingy to me and that's not exactly acceptable. Like, oh, well, if you go and see the songs alive, they are definitely better. Therefore, the album is acceptable because um, you can, if you know what it's like live, it's just like, no, that's just a lot of crap. So, um, and then he said there was more than the one solo, so maybe two solos in the first album. There was hardly any. Um, the solos that were there were pretty good, but um, the fact that they were pretty good and everything and then didn't bother just... Sh Screams absolute laziness to me. So the three singles they've released now um, didn't have solos either, so that was uh, worrying. But the pacing has increased, so uh, that was a good thing because you actually got a quicker pacing with the songs. There was a lot more interesting kind of lead going on, faster riffs and everything. Uh, the tempo was so quick and everything and super energetic. They sacked uh, the previous singer for uh, some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Hopefully it's because he was shit and they had the brain uh, sense to know that. Uh, but the new singer they brought in has a real high register to him. So he has amazing kind of power in his uh, vocals. It's not deep or anything. He has amazing power, great sores, and uh, he's versatile with his voice. It's not just completely monotone, and um, his voice is really, really great. So, love the new singer. The tempo is so much faster and so much more just fun and everything. It's a lot of fun, the three singles they released. 
and no solo is extremely disappointing. The songs have been shortened and everything, so you don't get kind of bored and fed up of it. So um, I think that was better to just kind of just focus on mastering the shorter songs, and then when they get really good short songs, they can then start adding uh, more to it instead of just try and do really long songs, but the songwriting and ideas are just so terrible. The fourth single they released um, was did have a solo, so... Um, that's what's happening here today. I am seeing improvement. Vocals have improved. The enjoyment and tempos of songs have improved. A vocalist um, improved and everything. Um, it's a lot more fun and energetic. The song length is now um, enjoyable where it doesn't get stale. And there was the one solo, so who knows if there's any more, but there was three without. So that takes us to this album now. So unlike the comment where he says you're just hating to hate, that's not the case. If there's something good, I will say it's good. So let's just get into the first track. So there is an intro track which is called The Poison of the Seed. I don't exactly really uh, go into much detail on that and cover that just because it's just a simple intro. It's um, a good enough intro. It's uh, nothing too bad that you would uh, kind of skip. Uh, you can enjoy it. Uh, the intro has a similar um, sound to uh, the last song. So... Um, Basically, the first uh, intro track and the last track have similar uh, sounds, so they both sound kind of the same, just out of interest. But, uh, yep, let's get into the first actual track, which is The Trail of the Mind, which was the second single they released, I believe, so I have covered this. But now I have an overall album surrounding it, which can change a person's uh, mindset. So, The Trail of the Mind um, starts off um, with... Um, the lead guitar doing its own thing, you get some thunderous drum parts as well as the rhythm guitar just uh, fattening that uh, drum pounds out a bit. And kind of a typical thing with the lead uh, just doing something and then you get uh, the rhythm with uh, the uh, drums and everything. And then you have a section where everything cuts out and then you get uh, the uh, riff um, of uh, just one uh, guitar by itself and then eventually the whole band uh, come in. Um, with uh, the kind of dueling guitars of the uh, lead and rhythm doing the same kind of uh, thing, the drums are uh, thundering away. The sound is incredibly fast paced, there's so much energy, and uh, the riff has um, obviously been a, a few things going on until we get to the main kind of riff before the uh, verse. So um, a lot of interesting things, it's a great fast paced, it's extremely energetic, it's a lot of fun, and when the vocalist comes in, oh, Holy Christ, um, does he uh, come in with uh, just such power? Um, he's given so much energy and um, emphasis on everything. He seems to be absolutely straining. Um, he may not be straining, it may just be completely natural for all I know, but it just sounds like he's just putting so much kind of effort and emphasis on everything he's doing and so much power. It just sounds like he is pushing his entire weight into uh, just delivering these lines and um, it just sounds incredible and um, his voice is amazing seriously amazing and um, there could be better singers out there but he's definitely you don't need a better singer he is definitely just perfect the way it is he has an incredible uh, voice um there's points where he uh, starts kind of um just um not pushing but just kind of open it up into a bit more of a kind of breathy kind of uh, sounds in the verse I think uh, some backing vocals kind of go up there with him. Uh, he hits uh, some highs and everything. The pre-chorus is uh, basically just one of them kind of um, heavy kind of just uh, chugging rhythms and everything with um, kind of an open sound and everything with uh, the vocalist uh, just taking a bit more of a kind of mellow sit back. Quite typical of pre-choruses of every band kind of. The actual chorus um, is a lot more kind of open, uh, quite laid back and everything, kind of straightforward. Uh, the voice just uh, being uh, pretty kind of standing and everything, very relaxed uh, as he's just uh, kind of singing um, along. Um, nothing uh, too um, amazing or musical. It's a good chorus, and I'm not complaining, it is a good chorus. It's just not one of these extremely catchy uh, choruses, or a really fun chorus, or a really emotional chorus. It's just one of these courses where it's just like that's a good course, it's enjoyable enough. But uh, as far as it kind of uh, goes, um, and then you get them um, a bit of play with uh, the uh, kind of uh, band uh, until they get back into the uh, second verse, kind of carries on to the same pace as your first verse. 
and then the pre-chorus chorus. -chorus. After the uh, second chorus, we get a change up. It goes uh, more into the melodic kind of realm of things. Um, I don't know if it's exactly clean channel. It could be the clean channel that the guitars are using. And then the vocals go extremely kind of light and everything, very bright. And um, it sounds uh, really nice. Obviously, we've now got into a completely new kind of uh, territory with uh, the vocalist as well as the instruments. Um, and it's all in the same song, so it's not just keeping the exact same pasting and tempos that it was high energy, a lot of fun, now we're just getting something a lot more kind of laid back, which I really do like. And the drumming, you can hear kind of uh, doing some kind of like, you know, kind of band march uh, type of their uh, drum sound and um, everything. So uh, the drum is what's kind of building that sound up to where you know where the sound's going to get back into its kind of typical kind of heaviness. So uh, that's basically just the drummer doing that and then eventually the guitars come in and everything and then the vocalist there starts doing kind of higher register uh, singing notes. And then eventually you get the lead doing his own kind of thing over the top of it. It's not a lead solo, he's just doing kind of a lead. It's interesting to be there just to give them um, a bit of diversity and everything and not make everything kind of stale into kind of basic kind of uh, typical riff but uh, just give a bit of lead to it. Just to add just a bit more flavour into uh, the song. And it goes back to the chorus, and that's uh, around about it, so a very, very fun song, uh, really enjoyable. you got some kind of uh, diversity within the song, great vocals, and amazing riffs, amazing power, great energy. No solo, which is disappointing, but other than that, it's a great fun song, yeah, Betrayal of the Mind. So that's it for that track. Let's get into the next track, which is Fleur de Lis. I pronounced that right. So even Floyd Lee starts off with a pretty intense, bombastic um, start like uh, the previous track, Betrayal of the Mind. Betrayal of the Mind had a bit more kind of um, an introduction to it with their kind of um, the two guitars doing different things and then kind of separating and then eventually all coming together as one whole unit. Floyd Lee kind of immediately off the gate just starts as a whole unit. Um, but uh, that uh, intro they got going um, is so fast paced, the drums are going unbelievably ballistic and um, they're going absolutely insane. Uh, balls to the walls and um, yeah, the guitar um, has the kind of lead tone underneath the rhythm tone of uh, the rhythm guitarist though where the two kind of tones are uh, both mixed together. Sounds incredible and um, again what they are playing uh, just kind of sounds amazing with um, high energy and, and everything. Um, as it gets into the actual kind of verse, it's uh, not got the kind of same kind of style that uh, the Betrayal of the Mind verse was having. With Betrayal of the Mind, it just sounded like they were giving it a bit more ferocity, especially with the vocalist, who definitely seemed to be putting a lot of kind of ferocity into uh, his delivery. Here with this verse, the vocalist um, is definitely just um, being a lot more kind of laid back, but um, not laid back is when he's just not trying, he's just kind of relaxed and not giving a shit. And it, basically what I mean by laid back is he's just basically um, using his natural ability without kind of shoving too much power and putting a lot of emphasis. It's just a relaxed tone, but uh, basically just having a relaxed energy to it instead of it sounding like um, a lot of energy to his energy. If you understand what I'm getting at, it's just his voice is just a lot more kind of relaxed with uh, the power being put through. And um, so uh, this verse definitely compared to the other verse uh, definitely just has more of um, a fun kind of relaxed kind of sound to it. Um, it's still quite um, heavy, it's still kind of fast paced like uh, the Trail of the Mind was, which is not as ferocious as that one was. The pre-chorus kind of is just typically the same as the verse, I just think they've just uh, kind of slowed the te tempo down a tad just to make uh, the sound a bit kind of uh, fatter and bigger. The chorus, the vocalist is doing um, high registers again just kind of like Betrayal of the Mind but it's definitely uh, quite kind of high and everything can treat the uh, some of the uh, delivery he uh, does. The uh, After the chorus you still get the kind of same run as the intro uh, did which is just that incredibly kind of fast energetic uh, pacing and then um, the chorus uh, hits again just like uh, the intro where um, everything kind of cuts out and then you just kind of get the one guitar and then some uh, drums faded and then they all start building up and then it gets into the first verse. Same with the second verse. Uh, the second verse and chorus again, still pretty much exactly the same. I think uh, the second uh, verse uh, they uh, kind of change uh, the uh, play a little bit uh, halfway through. Uh, not too sure about that one. I think they do. Um, after the chorus, there is another change, just like the Trail of the Mind had. 
where that went in terms of logic, this one doesn't, then it's just then the completely kind of their new kind of thing. A lot more relaxed, not kind of their, the kind of fun upbeatness of the verse of the epic uh, intensity of the intro, it's just seen as something a bit more kind of subdued, um, this uh, part here. But before they get back into the final chorus to end the song, uh, you get um, a kind of mellow part there where uh, the band kind of just kind of cut out, but there is kind of um, a sound essence that kind of uh, lingers there with uh, the vocalist uh, just kind of being uh, quite relaxed and then it gets into the uh, final chorus with uh, the uh, high registered vocal delivery uh, and amongst uh, the rest of it. So how does this compare to the Trail of the Mind? I think the Trail of the Mind has this slight edge just because it has a lot more kind of energy and ferocity to it and then you have the really relaxed bit so you've got some great contrast there. But at least it's definitely kind of a lot more kind of uh, fun and relaxed and everything. But uh, the kind of um, differential between kind of uh, paces and tempo and kind of things like that just isn't as kind of big as uh, the Trail of the Mind was. Nonetheless, great fun song, still really like it. No solo, unfortunately, so it's just basically fun songs that you don't really get a showmanship of amazing talent, really, from the guitars, apart from just great kind of sound and riffs. Other than that, not exactly much to go on. So let's get into the next track, The Day the World Stood Still. So this is the last single that the band released, and it's therefore the single with the solo. And I really like solo, so let's get into it so you can see how it does. Is it therefore the best track so far? Well, so far it's the longest track um, at 5 minutes 25 seconds, as for the other songs were around the kind of 4 minute kind of mark. Uh, this song starts differently compared to the other two, it actually starts softly with just the kind of clean channel guitar. Eventually you get a lead and clean uh, channel guitar that comes in on top of that. And then eventually you get kind of what seems like a feedback kind of sound and that's what kind of uh, brings it up to the uh, level where the whole band can uh, come in. You get uh, kind of uh, the rhythm going on but uh, the lead guitarist um, still has this kind of like lead riff going on which um, again really like that. I hate it when it's just basically the simple uh, lead guitarist just does all the same thing as uh, the rhythm. I hate it when bands don't have lead guitarist or lead uh, riff or anything like that yet they have a lead guitarist. I just think the bands are thick and they don't actually know what a lead guitarist is supposed to be. So, good to see they actually understand what it is um, in this band so far. So, props to that. Um, but, yeah, getting uh, more into it uh, as it gets into the verse, it's pretty much exactly the same as uh, the least. Obviously, as it's a new kind of a pacing to it, it's not exactly a fun replica. I just mean in uh, kind of uh, tempo and everything, it's still kind of that kind of fun and enjoyable catchy kind of uh, verse as the vocals ain't really uh, doing a lot of pushing or everything, it's very natural, kind of relaxed, but uh, again, great power to his uh, delivery, amazing voice. Um, he uh, lingers on a few words and everything, just uh, kind of um, opening uh, some words out, and then after that then he does some kind of um, volume turn down um, after that, so uh, he'll uh, kind of sting the line and then he'll uh, go fade it into the background and then he'll come back again after that. Um, typical of uh, some of the bands, um, typical uh, kind of their uh, technique bands do, but then um, gives a bit more kind of diversity to the vocals, um, I guess. And um, at some point in the uh, song, if you get kind of back in vocals, which are a bit kind of uh, kind of aggressive and everything, um, I don't know if the back and vocals is him, it may probably just be him uh, doing just a um, very kind of aggressive uh, kind of sound and everything in the background. Can't really catch what you're saying, it's basically just there for kind of the aggressive kind of sound. Uh, the chorus is pretty dull actually. Um, technically, um, I'm not really that keen on this track, it may be uh, the worst one for me on the album. Uh, same thing with my girlfriend, I showed her the first two tracks, she uh, really liked them. This track, she just said it's alright, but it's just not doing much. And this is because they're the kind of the chorus, they're, there's not much to it. Um, the vocalist doesn't do kind of high notes, there's no kind of high energy and kind of lead time. It's just basically a rhythmic kind of chorus with chords and things, and then the singer just kind of um, singing, but not in a kind of quick, catchy, upbeat pace. It's just quite kind of slow, kind of dull, and everything. And um, there's a part end at the end where he does that uh, typical um, thing of. Um, rock metal bands that they don't have much talent where they do the kind of their gang 
I don't like that, so uh, that part is just like, yeah, I don't really need that, but fair enough. Um, the intro part of the track I comes back as they lead back into the second verse, and then that kind of carries on back into the chorus. And um, the solo, so basically the solo here, um, it's alright. It's definitely nothing special. Um, it starts out with a typical kind of play, and then it does a bit of something else, and then it goes back into its typical kind of play. Then it has a beautiful melody to it. Uh, the melody is actually uh, very uh, nice, doesn't last really that long, but what, what he uh, shows is that kind of beautiful med medley is very good. Um, he has a bit of speed, but then it's not exactly doing much, it's just there. And then he goes back to his kind of typical kind of uh, sound that he's doing in the solo. And then he uh, kind of um, comes out of the uh, solo. So the problem with it is basically uh, the fact that he keeps reverting back to a similar pattern. So he'll have a pattern, then he'll do something, then it's back to the pattern, then he'll do something, then it's back to the pattern, then he'll do something, then it's back to the pattern. So you get sick and tired of that pattern. It's just like, I've heard this pattern, I want you to do something. Show something new, show more diversity and range instead of basically just. I'm going to do two bloody seconds of this thing and then just go back to where the typical thing with them is actually not the actual lead. And then I'll do a different thing here that lasts only two seconds and then go back to my typical kind of uh, rhythm lead. And it's annoying because you want the things where he's actually going out and doing something new. That's the good part. That mel melodic part was great. Uh, the teeny bit of Shreddy did was uh, good. Would like to uh, had an extension on that. And then the outro part there uh, was nice, but uh, that kind of just rhythmic thing, it just gets extremely stale. When it starts, it's fine, it's the first time you're bloody hearing the thing. But you don't want to hear it about four bloody times, over and over and over again, splitting up the parts where you're actually interested in. Because when it comes right, it's just like, no, I don't want you, I want what was uh, being done previously. So the solo is not bad at all, it's not crap, it's just, um, it's alright. Um, it's got some good elements to it, but uh, overall, um, he just kind of missed that mark. But it's still good, and I'm glad it's there. But uh, with the chorus and everything being uh, a little kind of bland, uh, unfortunately, it's not one of the uh, better songs. But um, it's still enjoyable. I still listen to it. I don't skip it a set or anything, so it's good enough. So let's get into the next one, Stigmata. So Stigmata starts off immediately, just unbelievable energy. It's just the second it starts is just high energy, everyone's going extremely fast, the energy is absolutely insane as they uh, start this track, it's like basically just probably the most intense uh, song on the album probably, even more so than Betrayal of the Mind. It's just like the second the song starts you already got in your mind just like, okay here we go, <laughs> let's just sit back and just enjoy this uh, unbelievable ride. And um, that carries on into the verse, uh, the uh, energy is just absolutely incredible, great fun, the uh, riffs and everything uh, with the guitars sound amazing, uh, the riffs are incredible, definitely an improvement over the first album of course, which was just basically just, let's just do some just very beefy sounding chord, be done. Which um, a lot of people just kind of say, just make the song as heavy as possible, but this is basically what talent is. So this is what uh, people should be asking for. Something that's heavy but has ferocity to it, and some great sounding leads and just great riffs. This is what you need. This is great. The chorus, again, um, amazing because uh, even though there's still kind of a high energy to where uh, this chorus and everything, and it's still kind of heavy, they make it quite kind of mellow and relaxed. The uh, vocalist just kind of opens up uh, so much, and um, especially at the end of the chorus, then um, his voice just kind of starts trailing off, very kind of fluid-like, and it's just really nice. I, I love uh, the chorus of this one just because it just has energy to it, but it's just so kind of relaxed. It's quite incredible because they're not going into a melody or a melodic, but it's just ferocious and the energy but not at the same time. It's very well done. I absolutely uh, love uh, the chorus and uh, the vocalist. I just love the delivery because he's just not going mellow but he is mellow again at the same time. It's just so perfectly done. The uh, kind of contrast remaining that kind of 
heavy ferocity, but it's laid back and it's just mellow and melodic as well, but it also isn't. And it's not the same the other way, but they're both still there. It's such a weird contrast. And again, as he ends on the chorus there, the voice just goes quite fluid and he just trails it off even better. It's amazing. The thing that does end the chorus though is what always comes to my mind is some kind of like Nintendo system sound effect, which is kind of weird. Um, it's the guitars, obviously, but it just sounds kind of like Nintendo. It's kind of like what Herman Lee would uh, do in uh, Dragon Force because he likes making uh, game sounds, and that's kind of what I get, just an uh, old classic game sound. Which leads back into uh, just uh, leading back into the uh, verse and um, great. Uh, nothing changes again until after the second chorus, where it goes and... Um, Melodic, uh, kind of like Betrayal of the Mind, but I think they uh, kind of take it a step even further into the uh, melody than uh, Betrayal of the Mind did. Uh, you got just uh, the clean guitars, you get um, clean vocals, swing with the method before. Um, and it's quite basic, there's just not much going on. It's just clean guitar, clean vocals. Well, they're always clean, uh, just, you know, melodic vocals. Um, but um, it's nice, it's just a great change of pace. It's just like. I've got so much energy that I don't mind just kind of sitting back and relaxing. It, it's, it's welcome, and that's great. And it's something just new and enjoyable to listen to instead of just getting the same thing. If Stigmata kept going on with the high energy, it wouldn't be as good And um, with all that high energy. It's better having high energy with this, so it is welcome. And uh, the good thing about it is it keeps um, evolving. So, um,. Eventually, um, you get um, a bit more kind of band in there. Um, the vocal, uh, the vocalist there starts there putting a bit more energy in, and then eventually he uh, goes with even more energy and everything, and um, he just puts more power into it. He always keeps it melodic, even though there's about three tiers to his uh, vocal delivery in this. And then what comes after this is just out of the gates an um, unbelievable volume increase that it kind of shatters your ears uh, because it comes out the gates are so bloody loud is uh, the solo now the solo is very loud <laughs> insanely loud and um, it's just with kind of like bends maybe there's a bit of whammy in there and then it's a lot of speed um, so much speed um, a lot of ferocity and um, very loud and aggressive doesn't last too long though, so even though um, there's some great speed to it and there's some good kind of bends and uh, whammy um, in there, um, it's not that long, but uh, again, it's just like what is shown is good. So, unlike the other one, where it's like you got a few elements where it's like they are kind of good, but I would like to see more. This is basically it was good, I just kind of want it to be longer. So, it's kind of an improvement, but um, still um, too short, unfortunately. So that's kind of a uh, stigmata, so let's get into the first single they released, which was Surrogate. So this was the first single that dropped by uh, The Raven Age, and it's pretty much exactly the same as kind of like Portrayal of the Mind, Flo the Lease kind of uh, thing. Uh, no solo, high energy, and uh, things. Um, as it starts, it has a build up uh, until uh, the band uh, kind of completely come in, the verse. Um, high energy, great uh, vocals with um, some uh, high energy being put in through them, and then um, we sometimes get kind of um, a higher register um, at times throughout the verse with their uh, back and vocals, I think, are there. Uh, the good part is the uh, kind of pre chorus. Uh, the pre chorus is uh, probably better than the actual chorus just because it's so kind of open and uh, kind of nice sounding. And then um, you get uh, just a kind of few kind of uh, chugs that uh, differentiate uh, the kind of uh, pre chorus kind of to the actual chorus. But the chorus just seems a bit more kind of straightforward as for the kind of verse was uh, quite aggressive and everything, and then the uh, pre chorus was uh, quite laid back and uh, melodic and quite pleasing and nice. And then you just kind of get the chorus, which is this kind of like this kind of in the middle blend, which. Uh, it's kind of like, it's not exactly heavy or high energy, but it's not kind of a nice melody at all, it's just kind of meh. So, um, of course has a bit of a problem to it, but the verse, uh, intro and things are very good, uh, the chorus is great. Uh, no solo again, which is disappointing, but we have had uh, two solos before this. Uh, the one just before was uh, really good, just too short, and then the one before that had some interesting elements, but overall uh, kind of uh, fell over. Uh, kind of tripped up a bit on uh, that one, uh, but um, 
here uh, you get it going into the melodic kind of uh, realm and everything, but uh, not much really happens. You don't really get um, a proper length of their singing and things. It just kind of goes mellow for a while, and then eventually the kind of singing comes back in with a bit more kind of uh, high energy. So they, when it, something does happen, they just kind of bring it back out of the mellow aspect. And just there, kind of have this um, a bit kind of uh, mid tempo kind of range and everything. The vocal is uh, great and everything, but not really putting high energy in. It's just quite still his laid back type of thing. Leading back to the chorus, so um, not a bad song again. It's basically just like a Patrol of the Mind Flood release. So if you like uh, them songs and everything, so we get is uh, just uh, pretty much exactly the same on them lines. Just a lot of fun. Um, has its uh, kind of uh, change ups and everything, so it doesn't get overly stale. But uh, other than that, there's nothing uh, really new to talk about, so that's pretty much it. So the next track, and uh, from now on, um, every track has a solo. So this is going to be now uh, really good and interesting. So let's uh, get into it. So Seventh Heaven has some more kind of interesting kind of structure going on compared to the previous tracks. It starts um, melodic, just with uh, the kind of clean channel, uh, single guitar. And then eventually um, the whole band comes in and there's quite a kind of dark eerie kind of uh, vibe going on um, when the whole band comes in, but it's all quite kind of light, uh, but uh, still quite an eerie kind of uh, sound, but uh, it, it sounds uh, still uh, very great and everything, and then the band eventually kind of come in and you get the verse. The verse, um, although it has uh, some pretty high energy, it's uh, definitely not uh, super high gain, high energy stuff um, going on. It's just um, a heavy kind of verse and everything, everything but it's definitely got a bit more kind of uh, rhythm um, going to it. Um, so there's a lot more rhythm to it. And then uh, the chorus is kind of nice. Um, still nothing uh, ginormous at all, but um, the vocals um, get into a bit of a higher register and then um, some um, parts of the chorus then his voice gets a bit more kind of a fluid at points and they're quite kind of nice and um, the solo that comes in is the longest solo so far on the album so the length of this is actually uh, quite uh, good actually like the length and what is being played is also kind of good but uh, the problem with the solo here is even though it's nice and it's long, um, there's like a sound to it and he doesn't go out of it. So even though um, he does kind of keep things different, um, it all follows this really kind of same pattern and sound. And he sticks to it very tightly, but only kind of just constantly kind of shifting around that just on the outskirts as he just kind of goes through the solo. So it has a very samey pace, samey sound to it, even though there is new things kind of being done, but because it's so kind of similar, just like, this does kind of sound quite samey, it, that kind of dampens it, even though it's not basically just a constant repetitive pattern, it just sounds a little samey. So um, that's a bit of a problem, it would have been a lot better if you just had different kind of tones, so you'd use the whammy to kind of change the kind of tone and effect, and then use bends and do shreds and then do melodies and things like that instead of just kind of staying in the same kind of tempo rhythm and things and uh, this kind of sound and everything can uh, scale and it kind of just kind of changes around that kind of a little so um no problem with that but um again it's um a long solo a lot of uh, bands don't do a long solo at all it's only usually like three seconds it's quite pathetic so it's good to get a decently length solo and everything so that's good and um Again, um, it does have differentials throughout, it just has a similar kind of sound throughout as well, which was disappointing. But um, after that it goes uh, melodic, uh, the drums there then bring it back and then um, the end of the song uh, doesn't go back to the chorus. Uh, what it ends on is basically it to the end of the song. And then it, um, the volume kind of turns down, which is typical of a few bands as well. Did, whole band is just playing but they've turned the volume down until they've basically just gone off. So uh, structure wise um, I like the kind of um, melodic start and then I like the eeriness and that comes after that and then you got the actual intro leading into a verse which has got a fair nice rhythm to it and everything, uh, still um, a bit of energy to it. Uh, the chorus um, 
has some good highs with the vocals and some good fluidity um, in his voice at parts as well, where it kind of goes uh, quite kind of fluid and then nice and soothing. So um, I kind of like uh, that differentials. The solo, I do like it. I'm glad it's there. It's just it. W he can do more. I know he can. I definitely know he can. So um, as someone who cares and wants the best uh, f for this band, I would, I am just saying you just need to do a solo that lasts a length like this. Uh, you can even go for longer. Don't do a short solo. Just always just keep it changing. Don't repeat patterns or repeat sound. Make sure everything always sounds new and very exciting. That's what you have to do. So, um, and then as it said, uh, the end of the song um, doesn't even go back to the same chorus. It goes down melodic and then it kind of builds up into a mid-tempo kind of end. So, uh, I like the layering to the song. That's um, a good thing. Solo. We get a long one, so I do kind of like that I can get a long solo to listen to, even though it does have this similar kind of sound. But overall, very good. I really like uh, the song Some Heaven. So let's get into the next one, Forgotten World. So Forgotten World um, starts with uh, the guitars and uh, the very bright in their sound and everything, uh, just kind of strumming away. So um, obviously it's another kind of build up. Um, eventually the drummer comes in with just boom, boom. Boom, so just really big, heavy kind of bass, I believe, drum the enemies they're doing. Until eventually it comes in, and then you get the verse, which is uh, kind of typical of the album, just a uh, greater kind of riff and everything, sounds uh, great. Um, high energy, great vocal delivery, um, pretty quick pace, they're not overly fast or anything, but um, good enough uh, pace to be quite enjoyable. The uh, chorus well let's say pre-chorus, though it is the length of the chorus, is uh, way better than the actual chorus. Um, it's such a nice sounding uh, pre-chorus just because um, it's just um, so mellow and again when you come off of a verse it um, has some kind of uh, aggressiveness to it and uh, good old energy. It's just nice just to get pre-chorus which is just so open and sound and then the vocal is just so fluid and so mellow and it just sounds so nice and everything and it's just like this is just so great and relaxed and just such a nice change of pace from the verse it's great just to get an aggressive verse it's like god this is so much fun and then suddenly it's like god this is so nice and relaxing that's a great pace then as it comes to the chorus and it's just basically back into um, one of these kind of high register kind of things he does and uh, still um, there's a good riff going on with it but um other than that, uh, not really much to it. Um, the solo of this song is actually... Um, let's basically start with... Um, it sounds great. Um, it's got a um, great melody to it, so it's not anything fast and um, bombastic IMG. It's just uh, quite slow and um, got some uh, great um, kind of um, emotion to it. It's got some emotion to it. Um, it's got a great tone to it. it uh, melodic and it sounds really really nice and then at some point and um, he just kind of does some holes and it's like oh this is so pleased and i can't wait for it to uh you know just pick up in pace and then eventually this all ends it's just like wait i was getting the build up which sounded amazing and it was nice and i was waiting for the payoff of basically the middle and then the conclusion all you've given me is the introduction and you've just cut me off so oh, it's disappointing Obviously, it, what I'm getting is it's basically the start of a solo, the build-up, and then it's supposed to kind of just go to another level of excitement. But I haven't got it. Now, the first part is not just build-up where you say, like, I'm just waiting for the next part. That is it. The first part doesn't matter. The first part was really good. Like, it sounded really nice, and um, it was great and everything. But there was no enjoyment to it. That's the point. It is basically just a kind of slow melody that's supposed to be a really beautiful sound and everything, just to get to something just a bit more kind of um, bigger. But it was still very, very nice. But there's just nothing out there which there needs to be, because it basically just sounds like a build-up for a solo, but that uh, just drops off. So, all I'm able to review is what is there, and what is there it did sound really nice. Obviously I just want it to be longer and to have it to have just a bit of a higher tier to it, like a different level. 
not a different level than I want it him to just shred like it's death metal or anything. I just want um, it to be a kind of higher, brighter tone of uh, melody with um, a bit of kind of uh, speed element kind of sprinkled throughout. You don't get that, but again, what you get it's uh, good enough. Um, I like the pre-chorus; uh, the energy's still great. So again, the song's fine, but. Uh, Definitely needed a bit more to the solo, so let's get into the next track, The Face That Launched A Thousand Ships. So, just saying this straight out, I really, really like this song. This song is amazing. It has absolutely amazing layers uh, to the song. Uh, so the song just constantly just keeps shifting and adding and adding and adding and adding. And it's just fantastic. It is amazing, this track. I really like this track. So starting the track, it's melodic, clean channel with the vocals. Um, the vocals have done melody before, but I think Emily's doing it in a different kind of style and delivery than the previous tracks, and it just sounds amazing. His voice is absolutely insane. Um, here it's just so melodic and just so warm and everything, and it's just so nice. And then uh, the guitar uh, that's um, clean channel uh, behind him. Um, just sounds great, it's not just simple bloody chords or anything, it's just such a kind of nice rhythm, it's nothing intense, no great showmanship and whittling around like um, a fucking child. Um, it's just so nice and just complements his voice so well, and it's incredible, and it just sounds amazing. Uh, you get um, an added guitar layer on top of that um, when it comes to, uh, I think, uh, the first um, attempt of the chorus where um, the uh, vocalist um, starts um, doing more of a high pitch uh, sing but uh, the clean channel still goes and then the second guitar comes in with um, a higher gain but still clean channel um, over the top of that so it's just a bit kind of a lot more brighter and piercing in sound um, over the top of all of that and that sounds nice and then after that uh, you get um, a bit of a lead interlude which um, sounds really nice it's uh, definitely nice uh, it's not exactly blues, just like um, a nice rhythm lead and everything. Um, great interlude, I'm glad it's there, definitely. Um, I wouldn't want it without. So uh, that's nice, and uh, the second uh, time through with this run, uh, you get drums. So uh, the drum now comes in, and then as it gets back into uh, that uh, chorus, um, the whole band comes in. I prefer the first uh, chorus just because I just find that just so much more kind of nice and relaxing and it's definitely different to all the high energy that the band's been doing previously so I just, I just really like that because it's just so new and exciting to hear and uh, his voice is just so damn great and the, the whole band were great I would love to see more of this going forward and um, they shouldn't ditch this they should do more of it and that if they do a third album the energy mixed in with this and everything where it's kind of equal I think we just have so many layers and diversity instead of it just always trying to go for high energy and everything so I would love to see more of this um yeah of course it's just the same it's just the whole band and everything the solo um is a, a fantastic solo I really like it um again I've kind of heard better it could have a bit more to it but uh for what it is it's fine as it is it's very good um, I think he cuts it off a tad too short. Um, it does have length to it, but it's just like you're really enjoying it and everything. And it just, I, I just always kind of feel like God, I just needed just a little bit more. Not like it's too short, he needs a lot more. It's just like just a little more, and th then I think it would have been, yeah, that's great. So, other than that, the solo is really good. Um, it's got a great melody to it, and um, it doesn't go for speed or anything. Like, people just constantly want whittle. This one just whittles like uh, one scale and everything just over and over and over again, but they're doing a thousand beats a minute. People just be like, wow, uh, the talent is insane. Idiots. Um, but uh, this guy has feel here, and um, he has um, some high kind of soaring uh, guitar tones at parts, and uh, it's such, such a beautiful melody and it doesn't sound overly samey at all, you keep uh, everything kind of fresh and new. And um, just with the first part of the song, just because it's so nice and everything, it's great. It's just such a shame that he cuts it off just a tad too soon. Because I seriously believe it just needed that bit more and I think other people will kind of agree with me on it. Instead of just saying, I think he cut it off where it needed to be, he should have ended it there. No, I think it definitely needed more. But uh, other than that, again, the song is incredible. I really like this song. It could arguably be one of my 
favourite, if not probably second favourite, because the last track is pretty incredible. But um, fa- fantastic song, absolutely. I love the song. So uh, let's get into the next one, Tom- Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So back to the high energy with uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So um, kind of immediately starts off the bath, um, high energy, high gain, and uh, fast paced and everything. Uh, verse being kind of like uh, them kind of uh, songs that are around that kind of same pacing and everything. Um, the chorus um, is quite nice, uh, kind of uh, open and um, got a bit of uh, musicality to it, but uh, a bit too grand. But the chorus is, uh, still, as I say, it is kind of nice, uh, got some uh, great kind of rhythm to it and emotion. So I do kind of like the chorus, um, I still like the yeah, high energy that the verse uh, delivered. As the second chorus it goes, I'm extremely um, mellow, so again I still like this as they do uh, them contrast instead of it all just being exactly the same, kind of uh, pacing and um, tempo, just everything towards high energy, it just gets boring very quickly. So um, I like that um, it goes uh, quiet, and uh, by quiet on this track it goes extremely quiet. Uh, it, the voice goes so kind of mellow and everything, same with the uh, band. But um, that just kind of leads into a solo, and the solo starts um, uh, loud, high energy, and just doing a certain kind of play, a rhythm uh, lead that um, goes on like four or five times, maybe. Which is kind of annoying, it's just like, uh, listen to this rhythm, doesn't it sound really, really cool and everything? You've got a bit of da 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 and then, ooh, look at this, and uh, look at this whittle, and here I go again, da 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 and whittle again, uh, yeah, you like that, uh, do it again, here we go, ooh, whittle! It's quite childish kind of sounding, it's just like, it, he thinks it sounds so fantastic, he does it like five bloody times over and over and over and over again, and it's got a bit of a rhythm to it, and then at the end it's just got this da 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 a bit of whittle there, and he's just like, ooh! And it, quite pathetic um so uh, that's quite irritating and um, it was nice the first time the first time I was like oh we've got a bit of a nice um rhythmic groove going on here and the second time it's just like oh okay and then the third time it's like uh, uh, what and then fourth it's like stop and then fifth it's like oh dear christ so um that's annoying but saying that um even though he does that like five fucking times, uh, when he's finished uh, messing around and being a prat, um, the solo actually lasts a really long time. It's like the longest solo so far, and it's amazing. Um, it's got great rhythm to it and great lead, and um, he doesn't, again, do anything excruciatingly quick. It's just great feel, good emotion, great rhythm and everything. At one point, um, it just goes into the high kind of stores and everything. You'll hear it when it uh, comes to it. There's just a point where it just, uh, just goes so high and uh, just kind of screams emotion um, off out of his instrument uh, with uh, what he uh, plays, and it's just such a great tone and such a great high um, melodic energy that um, he pushes with this one part. But the solo lasts a long time. It's got a bit of shred in there, but it's barely any. It's had bit and then great hold and great rhythm and melody and it is fantastic it's a shame that for some reason he thought he needed to do five of the same patterns which was uh, just stupid but um if he did that once and then went into that uh, that would be incredible but uh even still the solo uh basically when it properly gets into it is amazing so a uh, great solo there absolutely fantastic and because it lasts so long and it's so diverse and got great emotion and everything it does make you kind of think well why the hell are the other tracks not like that and it's a fair question to ask instead of just like well just accept it for what it is it's just like well no because don't you want the band to always have a solo of that caliber instead of just saying oh we just won't ask for it and just get given less because we don't want to complain it's like you're not complaining, you're just basically asking um, if you can do a solo like that, why, why don't you do it for the rest? You don't have to be mean about it, like I've just said, and I'm not coming across like a massive dick, am I? I'm just saying. That's a great solo to move the Unknown uh, Soldier. Um, great um, melody, great um, heart and emotion being put into it, great length. 
So, um, how come um, in the other tracks they don't have uh, solos that last that long or have that much kind of diversity? Because some of the songs are kind of a bit similar and don't do as much and have as much feel and uh, length to it. So, uh, why is that? Can't we get uh, something more along the lines of two of the unknown audio? That's not being rude, it's just making a fair point. And they may think, um, yeah, that is a fair point. I never uh, thought about that. Who knows? So, uh, it's fair in asking, and if you ask, um, and enough people ask, they may uh, see it and go, no, oh, well, maybe we'll, we'll do uh, some uh, better solos. And it'll just make the band even better, because you'll have um, a guitarist where he does animation solos all the time. So, that's it for that track. Let's get into the next one. And um, Simatar? God, no. So this track isn't overly as good as the others, it's kind of along the same lines as um, The Day the uh, World Ends, is that the name of that, that track, at least that one, you know? Uh, the Day the World Stood Still, so uh, Samatha uh, kind of follows in line with that. Um, it starts with a um, sound effect of um, like uh, one of these ninja swords there uh, kind of um, unsheathing itself or being sheathed, it's going in one way or the other. And um, the pacing is uh, a lot slower, it's got a kind of a dark aggression to it, but the pacing is uh, very slow, so it's trying to go with some kind of like darker, eerie kind of uh, sound and uh, trying to it. And that uh, goes into the verse. Um, about halfway into the uh, verse, though, they do kind of uh, up tempo um, a tad bit, and the chorus, um, again, a kind of slow tempo with um, the high register vocal delivery, which is uh, quite typical of uh, many bands, so uh, nothing overly special uh, to anything of that nature. The solo here is extremely pathetic. Um, the solo is so repetitive and bland, it's just like, you're not exactly trying to do anything here, you just basically got um, this kind of uh, lead solo riff, and then you just are repeating it over and over and over again, you're not doing anything. So, an extremely disappointing solo. The solo is pants. Uh, so, uh, technically, it's probably the worst solo of the lot. It is absolutely terrible, the solo. So, uh, extremely disappointing. Um, seeing that we've had solos that are actually uh, alright to um, really good to kind of great. And then we get a solo that's pretty crap. It's a little bit of a mess. It's so weird that. It's like that, but um, yeah, overall it's just um, a song that's um, a bit kind of slower and uh, moodier in uh, pace and everything. Uh, the chorus doesn't do much there, it's kind of exciting. It's just a darker kind of sounding uh, song with a solo that's uh, quite bland, so not as much as uh, the matter does. So now we're on to the final track, which is their uh, Grand Vuelto track, because it's uh, the longest one, around 8 minutes, and that is Grave of the Fireflies. So this song is definitely the best on the album, hands down, like everyone should agree just how brilliant this song is, I don't think anyone's gonna say there is a better song than Grave of the Fireflies, it's just a masterpiece of a song. So the song has so many structures because it is 8 minutes 9 seconds, it starts off kind of uh, in the uh, same kind of lines as uh, the ship that uh, launched a thousand, I forgot the name, the ship that launched something. Um, but um, yeah, it starts off melodic, just with the kind of one simple guitar, the simple voice, uh, not much kind of going on. Then it starts adding uh, elements and everything, and then um, it gets um, heavier, and we haven't even got to the chorus yet. And um, the whole band comes in, and the uh, riff that's going has a great lead to it, as well as the riff uh, with the actual uh, heavy verse. Um, the vocalist changing to uh, shift. Uh, from melody to the uh, more heavy stuff and then the uh, lead um, interlude leading into that uh, heavier verse with the lead in that verse all sounds incredible. The chorus is also really good, a lot of high energy, it doesn't just slow it down and open it up, it's just real high energy. And you get the verse again back to the chorus and you get back to the uh, melody with the vocals. And you get a long melody um, of kind of nothing and then you're thinking the song is either going to go somewhere or we're getting a solo. And then eventually we get THE solo. THE GREAT solo. It is so bloody great. It lasts 
a great amount of time, and it goes so many places, unlike anything he's done before. It's just so out there compared to what he's done, just so beyond it. Yet it's on the same album, which is frustrating. He just starts off with such a great rhythm and then great melody, and then it just goes off into such a beautiful shred. You don't just mind the shred, it actually has such beauty to his shred, and then that lasts a while. Then it goes into holes and bends, then it goes into a beautiful melody, then it goes into sores, and then it goes into a melody, and then he ends on shred. And it's just, it's just the annoying thing, it's just so diverse and so long and so epic in all ranges. How come we got solos where they only last a few seconds? The solos where he just repeats himself? Or solos where he has a long solo? but it kind of sounds similar. And then solos where they are pretty damn good, nowhere near this style and uh, technicality, um, obviously, but solid solo, but cuts it off just a tad too short. How the hell is this the same guy? I don't know if it's a special buddy guest, because it's so out there. And the thing is, which is kind of insulting and a compliment at the same time, is a solo like this rivals that of Mark Tremonti. Like seriously, Mark Tremonti's Blackbird solo, and, and amongst other things, um, it just, this solo rivals him. Tremonti's known for having heart and not just being mindless speed. There is a lot of feel in his play and he is very varied and everything, and has great showmanship and songwriting skills, and this has great variety, great songwriting, great emotion and great play. Is like Tremonti did this, and it's not one of his bland solos, it's one of the great Tremonti solos this sounds like. So why the hell is everything else not to this standard? It's just ridiculous. But anyways, after this solo we uh, get um, a change of pace, where it's just... Um, it, it's heavy, but it's um, one of these uh, melodic um, game uh, channel uh, plays. Um, and then the voice is just uh, very relaxed, very soothing, and then nice. There's a part where he says, now I sleep, and I keep thinking, is he going to say with the fishes? Every time he says it, it's like, ah, now I sleep with the fishes, but he doesn't say that. But every single time he says, now I sleep, I always go to the fishes. Um, just thought I'd put that in there, just because it always comes into my mind, now that I've said it, and whoever listens to this, I think, is not going to be able to get that out of their head now. Um... But um, the rest of the song just goes into a whole different place. It never goes back to anything that's been uh, trodden on, so it doesn't uh, go back and uh, retrace uh, previous elements. But this whole next part is all new and just really just quite nice and relaxing. It's uh, got energy to it, but it's just one of these more soothing things just to finish the album on. And that is pretty much it. So now we just have the summary of the album. So. What I was expecting before this album came out, because of the first album, I was expecting there to be hardly any solos apart from the odd one or two. And I expected them to be absolutely dreadful. I expected all the songs to just be exactly the same, nothing really big or changing with great structures. I expected the vocals to be good because I had heard him and I knew the vocalist was great. I just thought it was just going to be basically a very bland album of just... Um, Here's your uh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and that be it. And um, it's got good vocals, but other than that, there is nothing to it in the slightest. It's just extremely boring. And what have I got? Well, I've got a fantastic singer that has a lot of uh, range. I've got amazing energy from the band, like Betrayal of the Mind, Blood of Lees, um, Stigmata. I've got extremely high energy, fast-paced. I've got amazing riffs. There are some absolute brilliant riffs here. There's some great leads um, in these uh, riffs and everything, as well as in the intros. There's some amazing uh, lead guitar work here. Um, there's some great changes, like uh, the face that launched a thousand ships had that amazing melody at the start, and I absolutely loved it. I had Grave of the Fireflies that just had so many kind of structures and a fantastic solo. And that's um, another thing, I have solos. Now, there's only three tracks to fight, which was quite amazing. So we're three out of 12, so I get 10 songs for solo. So uh, that's definitely good compared to what I thought I was going to get. 
Now with the solos, that's uh, a difficult kind of story because I get songs like The Day the Worlds Does Do, which is like, yeah, it's mad, but uh, it's not bad, but it's not great. And then Stigmata, it's just like, uh, the solo's got a lot of high energy to it and speed, but uh, he doesn't then kind of go and do anything more with it. Then Heaven, the solo's um, all right. Uh, Forgotten World, um, he ended it a bit too soon. The Face of Lawns, A Thousand Ships, that's all... Uh, was uh, good and too soon. Two of the Unknown Soldiers, that was really good. And uh, Samata, that solo sucked. And Grave of the Fireflies was just a completely out there, unbelievable solo. Which makes all the other solos, you just question them. Just like, all this solo, all this album was done at once. So how can the guy go to do a solo like that, with, which is so incredible, and then the rest of them just, it didn't, he didn't seem to put as much effort or thought into making it kind of think of was he just kind of being lazy and just not bothered but then he just wanted to end the album on a high note so he just thought oh I may as well do a good solo to end it on but then the rest it's just like uh, if I feel like it I'll do a pretty a really good one but nothing you know fantastic like Grave of the Fireflies and then others just bleh so Solo wise, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I'm glad that there's 10 solos. I'm glad that uh, some of them, because as I say, uh, uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, great solo. Uh, Grave of the Fireflies, uh, really good. And then there's some other ones that are really good. And then there's others which are like kind of men. And there's um, the odd kind of crap one. So I've got a decent kind of range of amazing, really good, meh, and then shit. So um, real mess there. But. Um, Again, given a score to this album, I'm going to go with an 8.2. So, pretty high, actually. So, uh, 8 is very good. And then, because it's 0.2, it's going um, that bit more than that. And uh, mostly that's basically uh, just because of how fun it is, the amazing vocals, unbelievable riffs. Uh, I like um, pretty much all the songs. Um, all the songs uh, have some di different kind of changes of paces and different structures and cool ideas and concepts. The last track was fantastic. I've got some solos that are really, really good, but then I've got some pretty stinking solos, which I bring the score down a little. Um, so uh, mostly 8.2 and as well as that, um, going from the first album, which was just god awful, um, going to something this great and good um, compared to that, um, is quite an achievement, so I'm giving them even more kind of marks for that as well. So, um, obviously moving forward from here, I would uh, try and uh, now go uh, back to uh, their kind of longer songs, uh, um, because Grave of the Fireflies was definitely a good one. So having all that variety with the melodic intro and then the kind of more high energy stuff, and then at the end, um, everything because they're brand new, and then them solos that are like Mark Tremonti, you seriously need to stick to them. Because if you do solos of that caliber on like every bloody track, you are gonna be so goddamn um powerful as a band. You'll be amazing. But uh, the rest of uh, these songs with uh, the solos, I don't think you're really gonna get that far because of them. They're they're definitely gonna drag you down a little. Not that they're bad, as I said. You've got some uh, really good ones. Like if someone listens to Doom of the Unknown Soldier, they're definitely gonna say he's a really talented guitarist. They're saying with a few others, and then some of them is gonna be like. That was good, just uh, not much to it, and then others just be like, oh, it was decent enough, but they're pretty stale. So if you do um, songs um, of the length of Grave of the, Fi Grave of the Fireflies with all that diversity and variety, and then the solo that was in that, and make a whole album out of that, that album is just going to be so goddamn incredible. It's just going to be mind-blowing. So that's what you have to do, and uh, clearly you're capable. Just basically do Grey with the Fireflies, but then just do 12 tracks of there, the thing. Obviously, keep changing it up, but uh, yeah, that's it. 8.2, very good album. I am so impressed. This was just so unbelievable, and uh, that is it from me. So I'll see you guys later.